sons and daughters of Issachar, it is time to soar. We need to understand the times and seasons. This is soar, watchman, war to the nations. <laughs> Very good afternoon. Welcome, Lisa here, Saw Watchman Wall to the Nations. We're going to get straight into it today. Heavenly Father, I thank you for your love. Father, we thank you for your presence and we thank you for this new year. May this new year, Father, minister unto you and you alone. And may we, Father, find rest in this time and time to come in Jesus name. I'm going to go straight into it today for time's sake. <laughs> and yet time is in God's hands. Do you know? Welcome. God bless you. Please share the broadcast so others are able to know that we are here. It's 2 p.m. on your day of the wonderful Thursday. But isn't God good? And thank you for joining me because times and seasons are important. In fact, the sons of Issachar knew times and seasons and they had understanding in times and seasons. And you will know me if you have followed anything connected to our ministry and the Lord that we operate in that times and seasons. In fact, we have been teaching by the hand of the father, his Hebrew alphabet way, way back. And uh, each letter points to the Messiah. Each letter is a musical note. Each letter has a numeric value. It has a positional value. And each letter always points to Yeshua, Jesus Christ, the Messiah, the anointed one. He is our king and he is Lord. And this year is a mighty year. But where are we? Well, last month, if you haven't seen last month, then you've got to go and listen to what Father said. I'm going to try and keep it a little bit shorter for time's sake today. That's why we're not going to worship today. But don't uh, worry about that because worship is on its way. Hallelujah. We're going to sing and praise to our King. And where we sing and praise to our King under the anointing, he inhabits the praises of his people. It is all about the heart. It is not about the outward man. It is not about anything that we can do for him. No, no, no. He wants us. He wants your heart motive and he wants your heart. And this is that season. Worship, adoration unto the Lord. But we're in the month of Tishri. What is Tishri? Well, I'll let you know what it means. It actually means in the Hebrew language, the fall feast. It means returning to God. Tishri means returning to God. So in this month, the Hebrew uh, people, the Israelites, God's chosen, and that is us included, who walk in the vine. We are grafted into the vine. We are to walk in times and seasons like the sons of Issachar, and we are to walk in his word. And his word tallies with the times and seasons, just like the prophet Daniel knew how to interpret the times and seasons, just like the Magi knew how to interpret the times and seasons. They followed the star didn't they? They followed the signs uh, towards the Lord and the Lord is a prophetic God. He is a God of parables and times and seasons. And it means returning to God. It means experiencing his glory. Who's ready to experience his glory? Who is ready to experience his glory in a greater measure than ever before? Blessings, Gillian. Blessings, Elias. We've got Elias from Texas. We've got Julian here from the United Kingdom. And we've got Washington State with us. Teresa, Shalom. Good morning. God bless you. How are you doing? I've missed you all. Um, it's great that you could be with me today. Oh, thank you. Let's get to it so that we don't spend too long today. Look at this. Could you share this and let other people know that we're here? It is a random time, but it is God's moed. An appointed time. So Tishri means returning to God. It means experiencing his glory. Shalom, beloved one. How have you been? I love you. I love you. And this month is in the Hebrew calendar. It is the first month on the civil calendar. 
but it is the seventh month on the religious calendar. The Hebrews have two calendars, a civil one and a religious one. And Tishri is the seventh month. Well, we know that the numeric value of seven means it's completion. It means the cycle is done. In fact, Jesus Christ said on the cross, it is finished. And you can expect those things that have been done this last year now are finished. It is done. The cycle is complete and you've moved into the new year. Where were we? Well, we spoke last month about uh, where we were in uh, Elul. It was the time of the field. It was the time of uh, Boaz, a time of Ruth, a time of sowing, a time of harvest, a time of being able to approach God through Yeshua all time. We can approach him. He is approachable. It says enter into the throne room of grace in time of need. We can approach our king at any time. But he comes out to reach out to us and the harvest is plentiful. So that was a lull and we've moved into Tishri and Tishri is returning to God. So in this month, you would see people repenting. We should be daily keeping a short account with the Lord. It's called the Shuba, uh, repenting and turning back. And we've just left 5784. 5784 is very significant. That is 2024 going into the Gregorian calendar of 2025. Five, seven, eight, five. So the number eight, five is what we're going to look at. And the number eight, four is where we've been. So 80 is the decade. It is pay. It means to prophesy, to bow low. It means it's the, the uh, letter, the, the letter meaning to bow low, to be humble, to prophesy and to breathe out. So we have to take a guard, set a guard on my lips, oh Lord. Keep watch over the doors of my mouth. This is that time. Father wants us to take care of our speech and wants to take care of who we are around and what they're speaking as well. Because out of the mouth, the heart will speak. So this is pay. And as we move forward, we need to move forward into past the Dalet, the door, which is the Hebrew letter Dalet. And actually, it is a doorway. We know Jesus Christ. God bless you, Lydia. Shalom. God bless you. We have Lydia there as well. Amen. Let us know where you're tuning in from, Lydia. Beautiful name. Beautiful, beautiful name. So the Dalet is a doorway, but Yeshua is the door. He is the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through Yeshua, our Hamashiach, the anointed one and the holy one. Amen. So Dalet, the door, the doorway is a place where it is a transitional year. So we've been in a transitional place, a transitional year. And in Lull, the months that's just gone by was a transitional month. And the letters connected to that were the right hand of the throne of God, Yot, and also Sadi, 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 Sadi. And Sadi is a connecting letter. And Jesus Christ is the connector, the divine connector from heaven unto earth and through jesus christ we can walk through that door in humility because it means somebody who is impoverished somebody who knows that they can't do it without him somebody who was bowed low so no pay the 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 80 is bowing low and prophesying but from a heart of humility hello there god bless you from uh, god bless you god bless you we'll say hello but also it is a humble place to walk through the door. It says that we are to be of a, a humble heart, a heart that is sold out for the Lord, a heart knowing that we cannot do one thing unless the spirit of the Lord is with us. He says the spirit of the Lord is upon us. He has anointed us. We are anointed, but not through ourselves and our own works, but by him. So we know that unless we lean on and rely on Yeshua, we can't walk through that door humbly to where we're going to next. And we've done it. Amen. So you will have found yourself in experiences uh, where, you know, you have been in positions where it is all out of your control. Well, that is a good place to be, my beloved one, says the Lord. You don't want to be in control. Not at all. In fact, the Lord will take that away so that you rely on him and him alone. If we can have an amen. Yes, Lord. Amen. 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 We rely on you. So Tishri, the seventh month in the religious calendar and the first month 
in the simple calendar and we know seven is completion so it's done it's finished have you shook that dust off have you made peace with the father have you made peace with things around you have you received the humbling and the peace of god to be able to move into the freshness of where we are which is tishri I want to share just briefly a picture and shadow because Yeshua, remember we said with the Hebrew alphabet, there's 22 letters of the Hebrew alphabet. You can divide them into two. One speaks about the rescue uh, with mankind, that is the latter part. But one speaks about uh, our race, our race with him, that's the latter part. The first is the rescue. And every letter points to Messiah. So everything we are doing should be for Jesus. It should be in pointing to Messiah, every little thing. And your eyes should be fixed on the author and finisher of our faith. So the feasts are very significant. Returning to God, experiencing his glory. This is that season. So the Father says the divine shift is done. The stage is now set. Receive it. Hallelujah. And it took you a year to get this in place. And this is the Father's words. You have learned a lot in this season. And you needed to learn a lot in that season. Just give him thanks for it. Thank you, Father, for the lessons. Amen. I'll reply to you all in a moment. Thank you, Lord. And there are three fall feasts. We have other feasts, spring feasts. You know those. They're Pentecost and, and, and whatnot. But we are in the fall feasts. And we have just have Rosh Hashanah. Shana means to repeat or to change. Rosh is head, head or year. Shana means year, so head of the year. Yeshua is the head of the church. We are his body, the fullness of him. We are the fullness of him, but he is the head. And he is the one that we are to look to in this coming season. So we've just had Rosh Hashanah and the prophetic fulfillment of that is the feast of trumpets and it points to the rapture prophetically a coming event that is about to take place when messiah jesus christ will appear from the heavens as a bridegroom coming for his beloved we are his beloved we are his bride and the rapture is always associated with the feast of trumpets and you can find that in 1 Thessalonians in chapter 4, because it speaks about the trump that will sound. Receive the prophetic word today in Jesus' name. Okay, then we've just fulfilled the atonement. Well, I want to share that we have Yeshua, so we are atoned for. He is our great high priest. Hebrews speaks of it very clearly, Hebrews chapter 4. We can enter boldly into the throne room of grace in time of need, for he is the one who atoned for our sins. He legally brought us back from the dominion of darkness. We are translated now into the kingdom of the son of love. He is a king. He is a malek, the malek of malek, the, the king of kings. He is a Adonai, Adonai, the Lord of lords, and he is love. He is a gape love, and we have been translated into that kingdom. But in the Hebrew calendar, these four feasts, going from Elul to Tishri, this month, this month of beholding the Father, this month of returning to God, it speaks of the atonement with, it's called Yom Kippur, and it points prophetically as a, as a pointer to come. You see, Jesus Christ is a, a type of, uh, everything points to Messiah. Everything prophetically points to Messiah, and it points to the second coming. It points to Jesus Christ, Yeshua, our King and Lord, He's returning. He's coming back. He's coming back to this earth and he's coming to rule and reign with his bride, with his remnant, with the ones who have held on and have been steadfast, with the ones who have the oil that is still full, with the ones who have not fallen on the wayside or been corrupted, with the ones who have stayed in spirit and in heart with him. And yes, you've been tested. Your character has been tested. You'll be tested over and over, especially in the transitional place. But you come out refined as with fire, like gold, walking through, even on your knees, in a humble place, through the dalet, the door, to the window, grace, a time period, five, seven, eight, 
five. And the number five, we know, is a biblical number positionally in the Bible of grace. Grace upon grace, favor upon favor. We must have grace for one another. We must have um, unmerited favor for, for, for what God has done. We can't rely on our own merit, on our own achievements, on our own self, or on anyone else. We must rely on the one who is the spirit of grace because he will come in time of need. He will walk you through with grace, hand in hand, grace upon grace, favor upon favor. Hallelujah. And as you walk through to the Dalet, you become in the image and behold and breathe out because of the returning to the king, because you are experiencing him and his glory. You see where you can experience glory and it can be for self, but God wants us to experience this glory on earth as it is in heaven for mankind. He wants us to be the conduits to walk on this earth, to soar in the heavenlies so that we can bring his grace here to an impoverished place, to a place where they, without Messiah, are going to perish. Yeshua did not come to judge the world. He came to save the world, says God, and that's in John. That's in the, the book of John and was close to, to Jesus. He knew his heart because he laid upon his chest. So grace is unmerited favor. You cannot earn your way to Messiah, but it also is a time period that we are in an appointed moment this year. As we walk through and behold him, that means that we are the high priest just like the order of Melchizedek. And this is what this year is all about. So we've been atoned for, but the Hebrews would uh, go through the atoning sacrifices. And it is a time where it points prophetically to the second coming of Jesus Christ. Remember, we are pilgrims. We are passing through. This is not our full destination. We may rule and reign here for a thousand years, but this is not our home. We are called out. We are set apart. We are the navvies who prophesy and see things that be not as though they are. And we are the change agents because of Yeshua, who is king and who is Lord. So it points to the second coming. So Father wants to remind each one of us not to get too comfy. Don't hold things too, too, too close. You've got to be able to submit to the Lord and just let it go. He rules and he reigns because he's coming back and he's coming back for his bride. So that is the second feast. It's two days that happens and it's just happened now in Kishri. Amen. Which is where we are this month. You can find that this is the day where the Jewish remnant look upon Jesus. They look upon the one supposed to be looking upon the one who was pierced. Why was he pierced? He was pierced for mankind. He was pierced for you and me. It was three vabs, three nails, the number of man, six, six, six. Then that turns to the number of beasts that put him on that cross. You see, but you can't kill the vav. Yeshua is the vav. He is the divine connector. So three small connectors tried to take him out. But you can't spoil Jesus Christ. He is the way, the truth, and the life. He was the door. He is the vav. And he is the resurrection and the life. And anybody who knows Yeshua, who has received him as Lord and Savior now, is seated at the right hand of the throne of God. And this year, 5785 is the window. It is a picture graph of a man or a woman with their arms up in total abandon, looking up. So Father is saying this month, this year, do not look around. You cannot look around. Stay fixed on the author and the finisher of your faith because it is by faith you are saved through grace, not of works, lest any man shall boast. Amen. Hallelujah. And they would repent for their sins. And the, they would it says that, that, that the Israelites will receive Messiah as their own. You can find that in Zechariah chapter 12 and Romans 11 and 1. But now we just moved into one of my favorite feasts of all, and it is the tabernacle, the Feast of Tabernacles, Sukkot. Amen. So there's three, four feasts 
in Tishri this month. It is such a blessed month. Each month is a blessing. Amen. But boy, is it wonderful because there's three significant prophetic uh, significance and pointers to the future. And the word Haya means will come. That means that he is coming. He's coming back. It is future tense. And we're to draw, not just from the now, the harvest now. We're to be showing for the future. We're to be drawing from Yeshua from the future. Where are you, Lord, in the future? Where are we, Father, in the future? Where is the world, Father, in the future? Where is the body of Christ, Father, in the future? What are you saying, Father? What is on your heart? How can we help you, Father, as a conduit of grace? and love in humility how can we help you achieve what you want achieved on this earth as it is in heaven these are the questions that we should be asking holy spirit amen keep a short account with him and i feel the holy spirit's presence let's just stop for a moment glory to god we've got a beautiful person here hello god bless you god bless you god bless you let us know where you're tuning in from. Amen, amen, amen. He is our divine connector. He is central, central. Amen. And we're prophesying. <laughs> Glory to God. Really agree with this. Amen. Agree with the King of kings and the Lord of lords, and he will never, ever let us down. Okay. Then, so we're in Sukkot. The third prophetic significance in Tishri, the seventh month of the Hebrew calendar, the seventh month of the religious calendar. First month of the Sibyl, that means that there's new beginnings. Now we're in the new year. You see, 5785, this is the new year. But in the, in the church calendar, the religious one, it's the seventh month. It's also a new season. Seven is completion. Seven is fulfilled. It is done. Now you can expect the new. Are you excited? Are you ready? So it's pointing to the Lord's coming. The Sukkot, the tabernacle, are beautiful booths made with palm leaves. Palms are significant, beloved. And these were beautiful. As you remember, when Jesus Christ came into uh, the city, he came on a donkey, the most lowly form of animal. It would have been looked upon as if to say, what is this man doing? He's a king and he's right. So humility is key. He came in a way that man did not think. He came in a way that spoiled what man thought. And he came humbly on a donkey and he brought in the new era and they threw palms at him. And they said, Hosanna, Hoshiana, Hoshiana, save us, save us. So they recognized him as savior. They recognized him as Lord. And this is that. He points to the Lord's promise that he will once again, and he already does. With you and me, he tabernacles with us now. He lives in us. He abides in us. And we rule and we reign with him. The Hebrew letter that is associated this month, South Africa, praise God. The Lord has given great words over South Africa. He is pleased with you. He has seen what you've been doing and he is pleased. And he's pleased that you have kept the faith and continued against all odds. Father is pleased with South Africa. He's told me many times. Thank you, Lord, for your remnant in South Africa. Lamed is the tallest letter in the Hebrew alphabet. And Lamed is a picture graph of the staff. The staff is the shepherd. So Yeshua is our king and Lord, but he's also our shepherd. He is the teacher. He, the anointing in you teaches you all things. It is the anointing that teaches. And we need to go where? In the word of God and stay there. And the anointing will teach you revelation and things and mysteries and secrets and things of the kingdom that no man could ever do. But we have to apply it. We have to spend time there. And the Lord will lead you because he is the one who leads. He is the head. We spoke about that. So it speaks of teaching as well. So the teaching anointing is a very, very important part of ministry. And the Lord desires for us to teach our spirit of influence the things of the kingdom. He desires for us to step out in authority, in true authority. He desires for us to have a father's heart or a mother's heart to look after the flock. And a flock 
will need to have that staff because the staff is offensive and defensive. It will trace away anything in spirit that is harmful to the flock if it is allowed, if it's not controlled and dominated, you know, because Satan would like to come in and fill those gaps. We can't allow that. Amen. The staff will do the work. The authority does the work. You just rest and abide in him and know that the angel of the Lord encampeth around you, chasing and driving out anything. Do you receive that today in Jesus name? Receive it, receive it, receive it. He is a good, good God. This year, just gone, has been an Elijah showdown. We hear this quite often, but I'm telling you, <laughs> we've seen it. It has been an Elijah showdown. Now the separation and the divide is here, the wheat and the chaff, the false Baals and the true prophets, the true remnants. And this is that. And Father quickened to me and showed me Elijah lifting up his tunic and actually outrunning the enemy. And again, you many of you have done that. And Father wants you to stay there this year. Stay there. Stay in his grace. Stay humble, forgive quickly, love often, and get and know that the cycle is now complete. Know that the new season is here. Also remember that pay is communication. It means to communicate well, to articulate well, that we are ambassadors and ambassadors for Christ, aren't we? Amen. But I just want to share, hello, Jillian, God bless you. God bless you, Elias. Amen. That this year, 5785, the letter is I. I hope I'm saying it right, Elias. It's I, and it means to behold him. It's a window period of time where we minister to the king. This is that anointing. This is that season where we are to, uh, everything points to Messiah. It's for his honor. It's for his glory. And it's for his praise. And Yod Hey Vav Hey is one of the names of God. And it means Adonai Hashem. In English, if you translate that, it says, Behold the hand, Yod Hey. Behold, we're looking at him. We can see him, the nail. It points to the cross, it points to what Jesus Christ did for us on the cross. Everything aligns with Jesus Christ. Everything aligns with him. And this year is a year of agape love, but also judgment. This year in 5785, it is a year of emet. What is emet? Emet is truth. You can expect great exposure. We've been seeing it, but the truth now will be revealed. And in fact, if you are unafraid, then you will pray this prayer. Father, I thank you for revealing things that have been hidden. Lord, that I need to see. Father, truth, Lord. Father, that everything that has been hidden, Lord, that you will reveal it, Lord. And I thank you, Father, for that in Jesus' mighty name. And the reason why it is connected to truth is because this year is all about Sadi, the righteous Sadiq. Jesus Christ is the righteous branch, and we have two seeds on this earth, the unrighteous and the righteous. And the righteous do the right thing. They are integral. They are upright. They are God's children, and they walk habitually like their father in heaven. But then there is the unrighteous, and we know that there will be great judgment for the unrighteous. And Jesus Christ weeps. He doesn't want to see one perish. That's why he endured. Behold the hand. Behold the nail. Amen. Okay. So judgment, you can expect it. We're seeing it and it's happening. And why do these judgments take place? Well, God is a God of just, he's a just father. And he will not allow injustice to continue to take place. No, he is a just father. So I would ask that you would keep that in prayer. Amen. Daniel chapter 5, verse 5, speaks of the finger and the writing, many, many tekel passing, that now there is a balance. You have been weighed. Tishri is a month of balancing. It is a month of balance and being weighed. Amen. So take care. 
in justice because God is a righteous Sadiq and he sees a righteous seed. He searches the whole earth to and fro for the one who has a heart that walks integral. You know, John the Apostle walked integral. He loved Jesus. He stood by him. But then there was the unrighteous seed, the one that walked with Jesus. His name was Judas. His name was Judas. And he was the one that dealt with the money. He was the one that was given the the uh, right to look after all the finances. And he came became corrupt. His heart was not integral. And because of it, he put through, through his betrayal, he uh, put Jesus Christ alongside the others on the cross, thinking that they were destroying and murdering our Savior. But instead, there was a bigger picture. And the Lord wants you to hear this, that it, there is a bigger picture, that this year it is not about us. There is a bigger picture. We've just seen those three, four feet. Jesus Christ is coming back. That is a bigger picture. Souls matter to the kingdom of light. Amen. So you matter. Your family matters. Your sphere matters. Your influence matters. The people you are aligned with matter. But there is a bigger picture. And we know that there are many who have been in places who have gone through what they've gone through for the bigger picture. Just like Messiah went through it for the bigger picture. So it's not about us. We have to leave that behind. See from the perspective of the King of Kings for his glory. For it is about revealing the King and all his glory. Amen. Okay. Five this 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 year. Five speaks of the talents. What have we done with what God has given us? I want to remind you that each one of us are unique. Each one of us are called. Each one of us have our own position with the Lord. Each one of us are anointed and appointed for his glory, for his honor, for his purpose. Each one of us will continue to fulfill the things that he has called us to do by his hand. But we do it from the place of rest. No performance. You don't have to try and be like another person because you are not like them. You are anointed and appointed and given talents for God's kingdom. What are we doing with them? What, how have we been with what God has given us? This is that season. We need to look at how we have been with what Father has given us. Have we used it for God's kingdom? Have we used what he has given us to influence the children, to influence the kingdom of light? What have we done? Have we been good stewards and ambassadors? This is that season. And I want you to remind you that there is no religiosity here where people can put restraints on you, telling you you have to perform this way, you have to do things that way. Father will use you as you are, just as you are where you are. Don't allow anybody to put anything upon you in any way, shape or form. Because God is upon you. You put Jesus Christ on daily. So what are we doing? It is a time of multiplication, a time of provision for the vision. Without the vision, the people perish. But you can expect that the Lord will exalt the humble in due season if you do not faint. You must remain, remain fixed, remain stable, remain under the shadow of the almighty. Those who have been through loss, brokenness, in, in, in humility, no the cost and they know what they paid for to get to where they are you are anointed you were appointed not for you but for the kingdom amen praise god and it speaks of this year five seven eight five joseph the mantle of joseph isn't that amazing and i really relate with joseph as i'm sure others do and did you know that joseph had five mantles We've already released this word a few weeks ago, but now I'm speaking it out. He had five mantles. And first of all, he had, and he was given the coat of many colors. That signifies the seven spirits of the Lord. That signifies your mantle. That signifies what Father has given you, your rightful inheritance. And this was stolen from him through jealousy. And it was stolen through pride. And God restored it to him. So that's the first mantle. The second mantle, the second robe, he was put to, almost to death in the pit. They ripped it. 
it was and some of the people have been trying to hurt you kill you even steal from you they ripped that mantle but hold on because joseph was in the pit and he was shaved and he was taken out of the pit and put in another place in the palace potiphar's palace and the third row he was given was the one as a servant a servant in potiphar's kingdom and then you'll see from that he was then tempted he was then accused and slandered and he still stayed integral he still stayed he didn't fight back he just remained as a sadiq he remained righteous he remained fixed under the shadow of the almighty and god did the rest amen the fourth mantle the fourth robe was when he was in prison so he now had prison clothes on because he went from potiphar's house into a prison dress oh my word imagine what the robe was like in there and he helped many the cupbearer the baker and others because he was gifted and anointed appointed and father will use you wherever you are if you're in the pit he'll use you if you're in the prison he'll use you if you are in the palace he will use you so don't allow anyone to tie you to their system so that it, so that you have to perform allow god to use you where you are and he will because it is for him amen i hope this is making sense praise god the cup bearer this is the fourth mantle and he was he'd helped everybody but he was forgotten nobody mentioned him why it wasn't time when it is god's time you will be remembered you will be exalted you will be brought into position for his kingdom so we then had to take off that prison mantle that robe <laughs> shake it off have you been in prison have you been through a few things i hope this year you shook it off and you have the spirit of the lord the mantle of grace upon you as you move forward beholding our king and then he was placed in the palace the fifth mantle and this is where we are you have paid a heavy price for the kingdom says the lord some of you have gone without and some of you have given up things that you will never ever have been able to give up unless the lord did it for you you had no choice and now you are going to be mantled to be brought into positions of authority to be brought into positions where you will be with the one who has the ear to the kingdom the one who has the ear and influence in the sphere of the influence that you're in and in that joseph put on the mantle in pharaoh's house are you able to navigate in babylon are you able to navigate like daniel in babylon in the hood are you able to navigate in um in egypt or are you in in this clique or whatever where no thing and no one can get are you able to navigate in the world system and bring people out of their slumber and their sleep because joseph was the one that was chosen with the fifth mantle to navigate in times of famine in times of harsh terrain in times when things were going to be taken away because of a judgment that was about to come upon the land you see god always speaks to his prophets ahead of time and god gives them wisdom and counsel and how to navigate in his way not for our way but for his way are you ready because this is that season and i just prophesy in the name of jesus that there will be a season of plenty for those who have been gathering gathering for the king gathering for the children gathering not for their own empire gathering for those who are in need who are impoverished remember the lord and this is the last thing that i want to discuss aside the order of melchizedek matthew chapter 5. this is the kingdom this is where we are this year matthew chapter 5 and i'm going to get it up because i want to read it to you because it is absolutely the opposite of what we see at times isn't it let's just see matthew chapter 5 and jesus spoke opened his mouth and taught them saying 
Blessed is the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Do you receive that today? Poor in spirit means the one who recognizes that they can do nothing without him. Blessed are they that mourn, verse 4, for they will be comforted. Blessed are the meek. We need to stay in that posture of kindness and gentleness because you will win over the souls. They shall inherit the earth. Blessed are they that hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they will be filled. This is that year. Amen. Blessed are the merciful, for they shall obtain mercy. Blessed are the pure in heart. They shall see God. We are in the time period of beholding him. Those who are pure in heart see the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. He loves to be with his children. Time is our first fruits and he desires our time. He desires for us to spend time in the garden of life, sowing seeds of life. He desires to bring mysteries and secrets to you. He desires to show you of things to come. He desires to share intimate things with you so that you can be the conduit to pray it through. He desires to give you assignments from heaven on earth as it is in heaven. Amen. This is that. Hello, Teresa. Praise the Lord. Praise God. So he desires all of these things. Matthew chapter 5. This is where we are this year, the Ecclesia. Blessed are they who are pure in heart. We've done that one. They shall see God. We move into looking and beholding our king. Your motive needs to be pure. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall be called the children of God. Be careful who you hang around with. Be careful who are speaking things into your sphere of influence. If people are speaking negatively about other people, I would say that you need to remove yourself away from them because Matthew chapter five says this, blessed are the peacemakers for they shall be called the children of God. Verse 10, Matthew five, blessed are they who are persecuted for righteousness sake for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. We are now in the time period of the righteous Sadiq. Hi, Jean. Shalom. God bless you. The righteous Sadiq. The Sadiq is one who is righteous in position because of Yeshua, Jesus Christ. We can now behold him because we are in right standing with Jesus Christ. But the children of God won't just have that position and then abuse it. They will walk in it. And it will be evident. And that means that sometimes you're going to suffer for righteousness sake. You don't have to fight back. You don't have to do a thing. God will do it for you. So prepare yourself in this season because righteousness and integrity and right standing always prevails. The fruit will always outlast everything else. Theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are you, verse 11, Mark, at Matthew chapter 5, when they revile you, that's not nice, is it, and persecute you and say all evil against you falsely for my sake. Whenever that takes place, say thank you, Father, for the blessing. Amen. And I bless them as well. Okay, difficult to do, I understand, but keep on. Verse 12, rejoice, it says. <laughs> be exceedingly glad why you've got your reward you've just been blessed amen your reward is great because it says so too did they persecute the prophets before you the prophets didn't have an easy time the prophets were not liked the prophets were not didn't have this great no 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 the prophets were revered the prophets were the trouble the prophets were the ones that made people feel uncomfy the prophets were the ones that were excluded because they didn't want god in the picture amen but you are blessed amen this is it thank you lord you are blessed because your reward in heaven 
is great. Remember, we started off saying that we're pilgrims. We are not staying. This earth is passing away. All things become new. You will rule and reign as a righteous remnant for a thousand years with Yeshua, who is coming back. Remember the three, four feasts of Tishri. We've just seen it. We've just gone through it. And we're in Sukkot now, which means to behold him, to tabernacle with him, to look to creation, to see him, to see that he is bigger than all of this and that it is not about us, but it is about the eternal Monday. Father wants you to remember this year that there is a bigger picture, a bigger picture than you could ever possibly see right now. And you're working towards that. And this is that mindset that he wants, mindset that he wants us all to have. Amen. I'll catch up with your comments in a moment. Thank you, Lord, for you are the salt of the earth. And if the salt has lost its savior, where can it be salted? And if then it's good for nothing, but it will be cast out and trodden under the foot of men. I want you to say this as well. This is it. You are the light of the world. A city on a hill cannot be hidden. Matthew 5, 15. Neither do men light a candle, put it under a bushel, but it gets put on a candlestick. Then men, and then it gives light to the house. Father says, let your light shine before men so that they may see your good works and glorify your father in heaven. A righteous person will glorify their father in heaven by doing things that are not seen by man, that are only seen by the king. It doesn't matter what man sees. It's what God sees that matters. Everything is a seed. Everything. And there is a seed time and there is a harvest. And father says that if you remain in righteousness, yes, you may suffer, but the fruit will always outweigh it that he will turn it around for good. He is a good father. He is a righteous father. He is a just father. And he is a father of truth and met. This is the year of a met. So to finish it off, because we've got about 10 minutes left, you are temple people. This year, it is about the temple. It is about the high priest anointing and the Levitical anointing. You can expect the new sounds to arise the psalmist arise with ancient oh, sounds arising that break through the bronze, the bronze place. It breaks it. It brings heaven on earth. And those psalmists will go and do business with God in the secret place for all mankind. And only the psalmist will know and, the people, and God will know until you get to heaven and then maybe it will be shared. This is that season. Amen. The temple people. So how can we attend the temple? First of all, you need to look after your own temple, what you are watching, who you are around, what you are listening to, who is speaking over you, who you are aligned with, who and what is going on. You take care of your temple because this is God's temple. Therefore, it is not your own. Lest uh, anything defile it. No, no, no. The anointing in you is more precious than anything else. So guard it and protect him in you. He is a person. Holy Spirit is a person. He's not just the Holy Spirit, although that is grand and mighty. He's a person. So that means that he can be grieved. He can be saddened and he will withdraw if things do not walk the way that they are supposed to with him. So treasure the anointing. Because it is not for you, but it is for mankind. It is for it is for earth as it is in heaven. It's not so that you can build the platform to gather lots of funds and everything else. No, it is not for that. It is for God and for his kingdom and for the lost souls before Jesus Christ comes back. That is why the anointing is here. And the anointing and the mantle will break the the restraints that mankind will try to put on but you must remain fixed and stable now under the shadow of the almighty everything else must go he is first place we are to attend him we are to minister to the king how can i minister to you today father 
what is it that you would like me to do today, Father? And I'm not saying you won't go through things. Things won't be difficult. There won't be things that get in the way. There's been too many distractions. Father says the first thing you need to do is to get rid of all the distraction and to get back at his feet. He says this year, it is not about scrolling endlessly on media and everything else and all sorts of other things, not just social media, but doing business and being busy, being busy. No, no, no. It's a time to let that go and to be at his feet, to listen to what is coming, to listen to the instructions of the king, to heed what it is that he wants revealed on this earth at this time, to bring forth heaven as it is on earth, to position yourself and the children for what is about to come. Because I don't think people really, really, really realize what is about to come here on this earth. And I want to share more about that, and I will do when he releases it. Uh, but until then, I'm not going to share too much. There's so many voices. There's so much noise. There's so much of this, that, and the other. I don't listen to anything but what God says. I'm glad you're here with me today. That's good. Amen. But don't be going here, there, and everywhere, getting everything. No, no, no. Because you've got conflict. You've got, you know, you need to hear the Lord. What is he saying? I'm not interested in what man says. I want to know what the Lord says first. Then you go and venture elsewhere. Then the Father will confirm it. Then it will dovetail. Then it will align with the kingdom of light. Then you will know that it is from him. But until then, you need to know his voice. He says, my sheep hear my voice and they follow me. He says, they don't follow the stranger. Amen. But we know that now we're in the end times and there is a great apostasy and deception. So many have fallen and followed strangers. And now they are in apostatized state. And Jesus Christ weeps. He wants his children back. He is calling them back. And how do we do that? We align ourselves with the spirit of God. Listen to his instructions. Do it from rest and he'll do it. Faith is a rest. You could strive and build everything and all of this stuff for 10 years and he'll do it within one day. He'll do it within one hour. That's the kingdom of light. He's a miracle working God. Do you believe him? And the order of Melchizedek was an ancient order. This is where we are. The high priest mantle. Check the mantles that are upon you. Check it because the high priest mantle knows the cost. They know how to stand in the gap. You are a living altar unto the king. Your life is an altar. Your house is an altar. Your ministry is an altar. Your, 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 everything you do is an altar. It is an altar to something. Is it an altar to the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords? This year is a year of divine revelation. Father, I thank you for wisdom and foresight going forth in Jesus' name. Keeping our eyes on Messiah. In Jesus said, nothing else matters. Not one thing matters. Only him. He's coming back. And I can tell you this, that the red horse and the horses of the apocalypse, we're seeing them and we're seeing things aligned at this time. I will do, Ishmael. God bless you. Oh, the Lord loves you so much. He loves you so much. And he gathers you, says the Lord, like he does his chicks. He gathers you and the family like he does his chicks. That's the image I'm getting where I can see the hen and I can see that you are being gathered and your family in Jesus' name like those. Amen. He loves you so much. He loves you so much. And he's covering and protecting you in Jesus' name. Father has been speaking to me about the celestial signs that have been taking place, the things that people are just allowing for them to go over their head. In fact, you know, it's very, you know, in depth. And we have to stay aligned to the Lord and to his word, but also he moves in times and seasons and odds and signs. And yes, we have a devil that also will manipulate those times. But I want you to know that the spirit of truth, the spirit of unmet, Truth, high Jess, has already been there first. The devil is only trespassing on where God has already been. It's, the, it's too late. It has already been done. Now, what the devil will try to do is unpick it and unravel it and do whatever he can. But it's too late. God is almighty. God is all powerful. And there are signs in the heavens and on the earth. They are odds of this time. And the red horse 
has been released it is being released i've seen it and also we're seeing the others being released hi stephen shalom and god bless you and also we're seeing celestial signs taking place we're in the latter days and we've just had the ring of fire but there was a significance because the the signs that came together there was twin comets that have just gone by and the twin comets were very significant and they were of war we are in that period now it is not a period just to stand down just to you know be going about your business and forget no 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 we're in a period of war and when those who are in a period of war know what to do and know who to rely on and that is not on ourselves i won't go in depth with it all because it's so much to take in but there has been two twin comets that have just happened one happened a few years ago now we're in 2024 it's the same alignment now we are in the war season so we must be praying for people's souls we must be praying for people to come into the kingdom remember jesus christ is future tense he's coming back we're in that feast right now he is coming back and in one sentence five seven eight five behold a window of grace to see as he sees to live as he lives and to prophesy his breath that is given but not just to the earth back to him what are you speaking to him what are you prophesying back to him he wants to hear those the word prophesied back and this year is the year of all eyes on your shore jesus christ amen remember him and he remembers you he says he who don't denies me therefore i shall also deny he doesn't want to see one person suffer he doesn't want to see one person go to hell and that was the other picture that i saw i saw the fiery lake it was furious i was in worship worship with the king and normally he takes me just to the most beautiful heavenly places and places in the earth or assignments that we're doing getting work done with the father but he showed me the furious lake of fire and that means that many will end up in that lake of fire and i saw him crying and weeping because he doesn't want one person there remember we are the remnant we are his remnant we are his righteous seed righteousness will always prevail you don't have to defend yourself righteousness will do it for you god will defend you stay in line with him we are his holy bride and they know the call and they know the sacrifice they know the weight of their calling set apart you know the weight of your calling you know you know it you've paid for it hallelujah amen now father i just break off every evil word that has been spoken against your people today in jesus name father all unbelief in the name of jesus are bind and break all spirits of blindness all unbelief and all hard hearts in jesus name those who have turned away from you father i break off all fear and I prophesy and decree, be of good courage. All of heaven backs you. Your name is written in the book of life and you will rule and reign with Messiah, Yeshua, the anointed one, the holy one, hallelujah. Father, I thank you for the fresh mantle right now of the order of Melchizedek, the ancient pathways to arise. In them, they're already deposited. Arise as they are temple people to take their place father i call the church out of the world in jesus name for the gates of hades shall not prevail against the church you said father you will build your church and the gates of hades shall not prevail father also reminded me that there are those who are being recommissioned just like moses at 80 80 years old get ready you're being recommissioned it's time you're not finished until you you won't be finished when you you've been resurrected because there's still things to do for his kingdom you'll be ruling and reigning here amen you're ruling and reigning spend time in his presence spend time in worship just listen to him take care of all distraction don't look about just look unto the king of kings and the lord of lords and he will reach you there are teams 
teams of two two is better than one remember that two is better than one okay so there are teams teams coming together they're already there they're here father says they're here the teams are here and you know it and you felt it and now you've been positioned to move forward in it praise god thank you lord and he says arise and shine for your light is calm for the glory of the risen lord is upon you don't forget matthew chapter 5 that is our portion don't forget the five mantles of joseph that has been your portion now you are moving into the fifth one and it's not for you it's for him remember what i say it's a there is a bigger picture it's not about you it never was although you were important that you matter and that you are precious and that you father says that you are my chosen vessel for the kingdom amen and i could see as i was walking with father just pondering with the father the table of the lord and the marriage supper of the lamb feasting with our king of kings father says this is where i want you i want you to abide with me abide in tabernacle with me okay this is what he showed me now he says i'm the protector of the nations and he was highlighting uh, africa <laughs> there you go highlighting south africa africa and south east asia and the usa at this time oh yes i mean it's been prophesied already but there's been a balance concerning it we're seeing the palm come through with the lord gave a word about the palm the righteous palm he said the righteous shall flourish like a palm what have we seen take place and come to pass we saw the hurricanes that took place we saw the assassination attempt the second one with trump father warned about these ahead of time yes he did what else has he warned this just this last week he warned about a fire that was coming it's just happened we've just seen a mass explosion in gloucestershire sadly two people lost their life but seven of them survived this is that father says now father wants you to heed the watchman and wants you to start to pray in line with his word to see life saved this is why he came what else have we seen come to pass so much because he is in the future and he desires to share things to come good and bad father is not partial you we can't hear one thing and not the other he wants you to know so that you can be armed like a watchman so that you can then go to prayer so with regards to the united states i did see the transition take place amen thank you lord but father said that at the moment in U the united states there has been some sort that we've got to pray for protection for them at this time this is very important at this time and also father says we need to watch the bear watch that bear in jesus name okay intercessors he says you've been hindered you some of you have been sick he says but you've remained strong in me your root system has been strong just like a house that didn't blow uh, when the wind came you remained strong because it was not you but it was me in you amen nothing will take you down because jesus is with you do you believe it amen i could see toxic waste being pumped into the seas it was like black tar and it was being pumped into the seas and there's going to be some sort of uh, uh problem there affecting wildlife and affecting military we need to pray in advance now for this we need this to stop before it happens because the military need to be able to use the water for their benefit so that we are protected right amen okay i could also see that there were tunnels in london being used underground tunnels so we need to pray for these underground tunnels in london father said the lgbtq whatever they are we're on a high note but now they're going to be on a low note says the lord the lord wants them he wants them all to come into the kingdom amen i also saw that there was a problem with water water works that for domestic use there's been such a problem with that people have not been well let's pray for the united kingdom for those types of things as well amen so make a note of them and you can find all of the different things that we share the warnings everything are all on store watchman wall to the nations he says i am the aleph and i am the tav he is the first and he is the last he is the ox aleph anointing the leader of leaders the apostolic leader of leaders the father 
ox. He is the father to us all, but he's also the finisher. He will finish everything that you have started. And Ephraim, the, the tribe of Ephraim is the United Kingdom. And they are highlighted this year. And I just prophesy and decree that to you and to your household and to all that you are involved in concerning Ephraim and concerning Joseph, who is the, the uh, connected to Tishri, that you are a fruitful bow, and that you will be fruitful and that you will multiply in Jesus' name. Amen. And there was a quote from Churchill and he remarked, and this is that, this is the Sadiq. This is the year 5785. You've done it and you'll continue to do it. Jesus Christ gave his life for you and for me. Sometimes we're going to have to give everything and more for him. He wants everything. He'll use you if you are ready to surrender, if you are ready to let it go. And then you, you've let it all go and then he's going to come and take more. Amen. And this was the quote, remark that Britain gave away Ephraim, their empire, to save people, to save the world. When was that? That was in the World War. That was a quote from Churchill. It's a time of Ephraim giving away for the sake of the kingdom. And Father says, unless a kernel of wheat die, how can it produce so much more? That's another part of it. So you are witnesses here. You are martyrs. Martyrs means to go ye into all the world and be a witness for me. That means in any way that you can. Don't follow another person. Hear the Holy Spirit. Let the Holy Spirit tell you what to do in your sphere. What you're to do to be a witness. It could be anything. You're not the same as the next person. No, no, no. You are unique. You have a unique mantle. Father will use you just as he used Joseph in a prison. He used Joseph in a pit. He will use Joseph in Potiphar's house and he used Joseph in Egypt. Are you able to navigate in Babylon? Are you able to navigate in the Egypt? Because this is that season. He wants his children back. Father says New York. Now we're going to the nations. One more thing. He says, you have had little strength, but you've kept my word and you've remained faithful. The coming months, we shall see some more fractures in networks, government networks. And tyrannous men have now been placed. And Father says he's going to displace them. And then he said New York. And he said they've been an object of scorn at this time. But the enemy has sought to destroy them. He says, but I have plans to stop this. Thank you, Lord. And he says mid-October, we're going to see revivals take place in certain areas. Amen. He says the nations are about to become more acquainted with terrorist activity. But Father said, I am he, and I am going to thwart this. He will. He sees ahead, and he will warn ahead, and it will be thwarted. Thank you. Father also said, watch Libya. You have to watch Libya, for they are lying in wait at this time. He says, my golden throne, you'll know what I'm talking about, is all that matters in the days and the months ahead. Father says, keep out of folly. Keep out of distraction as you move forward towards the prize and the hope of your calling. He says, rivers have arisen. They've risen. And there shall be uproar in the Middle East. But those who belong to me and my covenant know how to stand, where to stand. And having done all, they will stand. Okay? Global warming is a smoke stream for weather patterns. He says, the rivers have risen. My watchmen have warned. Floods are everywhere. Where are my watchmen? He says, I have warned that these weather patterns are here because of the weight and the moanings and the groanings of sin. It is not connected to being manufactured. They're not that powerful, by the way. It is the weight of the moanings and the groanings of sin. And yes, judgments as well. It's easy to ignore all of that. Father says global warming is a smokescreen and weather patterns uh, for the nations moan and groan under the weight of sin. But then he went on to say debauchery. What is that? Sex, gambling, lies, debauchery, addiction, everything 
unholy father says you will see a harvest of souls amen we're going to see it do you believe it and he says my nature is to bless my children and yet so few have actually done that instead they have fought them he says and tarnished their name what i want you to remember is this goes this prophetic word is not just a personal word this is a global word this goes past them to nations remember we were just speaking about new york okay my nature is to bless my children and yet so few have done it so few instead they have fought my children they have tarnished their name and for this i am displeased i don't like it when my father is displeased and i don't like it when my father tells me leave them to it i know they're in trouble when my father says things like that you're in trouble don't get to that level amen okay they've tarnished his name for i am displeased says the lord seek me and know my heart for i am good and i am a loving father one who knows the cost and who knows to give good to his children he says i am reaching even now deeper into your heart and men's hearts for many have denied my voice and denied me he said the spirit of depression and oppression have attacked my warriors and yet they remained they remain rooted in me they remain rooted in my word and they are like a palm tree they are rooted oaks of righteousness a planting of the lord he says they are like my breath the breath of incense that causes nations to shift Woo! sons and daughters i have not delayed says god but i am and i have caused you to see that i am with you and that i will defend you he says let your core being be consumed now with my love for this is that time this is key he says for some circumstances have not been favorable he says for some there's been struggle there's been warfare and he says this children is not my doing it's not his doing he says i am a loving father and i desire you to prosper be in health and prosper even as your soul prospers he says this new year 5785 will be marked with tribulations and some trials but those who are my own see past them to my heavenly throne father says hold on hold on to me he says the taliban have been secretly making new arms ready to attack he says be pre- be prepared to go to the front line be prepared for this he says for where you need to be in order for this to change we're in matthew 24 you need to read it and father says i am opening the gates of praise i open the gates of praise of thanksgiving come into the secret place and abide with me tabernacle with me and father said this there has been a nervousness he says there's been a nervousness for too long have my children been put in compromising positions no more father will put a stop to it and he mentioned iran and he said direct attacks have been imminent this was a word we've just released a couple of weeks ago and he says that it's been in the planning for a long time but i shall see to this that they shall fall to their own demise father says i am the protector of the nations he says september was a month of counting the cost we're in tishri october beholding the lord this is a month of a fresh wave of anti-semitism he says thwart this loose my word now in the airways he says pray for my people and then he said there was a time of great deliverance he also said and we released this a few weeks ago just the next day it came out about france france is not to be trusted for they've sought to align to the antichrist but father is in control i'm going to stop there heavenly father we thank you for tishri we thank you for the completion we thank you for the new season father we thank you for your prophetic instructions and your alignments father i thank you lord that we are the first 
of the civil calendar. Now it is a new year. Lord, we submit it on your altar. This is your year. Father, I thank you for the high priest mantle and anointing. Father, nothing else matters but you. Jesus, we lay aside every weight and sin that so easily besets us. And we look unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith. I break off all witchcraft in Jesus' name off people's minds eyes, ears, heart, mouths in Jesus' name right now. And now, Lord, I thank you for the mantle of grace, the mantle of favour and the spirit of the Lord to inhabit the praises of your people. Thank you, Father, for the fresh cycle and Father for provision for the vision. Thank you, Lord, for the signs of the times. Thank you, Lord, for the understanding of the signs of the times. Lord, keep us out of folly and distraction. Keep us away from those who are in deep sin and debauchery and lies and trickery father expose every lie and expose every hidden thing lord in jesus name as we have your eyes and your ears as we move forward fiercely for your kingdom for thine is the kingdom the power the glory father i thank you for manifestations of your glory signs miracles and wonders father and for your love to be evident with your children lord for a fire to be ignited in the belly as we are your living altar a flame unto the king lord most importantly just put your hand on your heart I thank you, Father, for worship, true worship. Your word says those who worship me will worship me in Emet, in truth and in spirit, Ruach, in spirit and in truth. And our true worship and reasonable service to you, Lord, is submitting ourselves unto you as holy sacrifice. Father, I lose that now in Jesus' name. They will be holy and set apart for you are holy. And I thank you, Jesus, for your love, for your children. Father, you're reminding me of, 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 Father, the shield of faith that quenches every fiery dart of the wicked one. And also, Lord, I remind you of the lake of fire that you showed me, Lord, that, that there are many, Lord, who are going to go there and you don't want that. Is there a way back? I call, Father, for mercy. And I thank you, Lord, for a great shift and a great turn. Lord, I also bring you, Father, you showed COVID-19 ahead of time, Lord. No, hardly anyone saw it. Father, you showed it because you do. You're a good father. And I love you, Lord. And Father, you've told me uh, of other things that are coming. Lord, and I ask now, Father, for, Lord, for you to reveal these true things to your true authentic prophets, Father your true authentic watchmen, so that when the time comes, they can decree it and, and pray ahead of time to reverse the damage that the devil is trying to cause. This I decree and declare, Lord, in Jesus' mighty name. And I give you praise and honor for it, Lord. I thank you for the living flame. I thank you for the altar. Lord, a fresh altar of sacrifice. Oh, Lord, we paid the cost. Now, Lord, you paid in full. We agree shackles are being broken today in jesus name do you see it i've just seen it praise god and lord i thank you for your love all hindering spirits are bound and broken this day in jesus name you take your hands off the anointed of god i thank you lord that they will run and having run that they will see in a, in a greater measure than before and father i thank you for dreams and visions lord that will back it up, Lord, in Jesus' name. I thank you, Father, that you use your children in dreams and visions. Where anybody has tried to shut down your spirit, I reawaken by the power of grace in the name of Jesus right now. Father, I thank you that, Lord, that we shall, Father, rise, Lord, with eagle's wings. Thank you, Lord, to a greater place of intimacy in the secret place. This I decree, and Lord, you're bringing me the floods. There's such a, a, a thing taking place. You warned us five, six weeks ahead of time before they hit and they went worldwide. Lord, Father, I ask for the blood of Jesus over the elderly, over the single parents, over the sick, over the lame, over those who are vulnerable, over businesses, Lord. Father, that you are a God who enables where there seems to be no way. And Lord, I just give you praise for your children in the season and the seasons ahead. Yes, you told me not the seasons ahead. Lord, that the children are yours. They've always been yours and that we call them back in Jesus name. OK, I better go.
Shalom and God bless you. We've gone 20 minutes over. Thank you for being with the Lord, first of all, and me. Amen. Because it is him in me, him in you, the hope, the glory. Okay. Thank you, Maureen. Shalom and God bless you. Thank you, Elias, all the way over in Texas. Shalom. God bless you. Thank you, Teresa, all the way in Washington State. Shalom and God bless you. Thank you, Ishmael. That prophetic word was for you, like a hen does his chicks. Amen. Praise God. Thank you, Jean, who was there earlier. Praise God. We bless you in Jesus' name. Thank you, beloved Sentol, in Jesus' name. Amen. Stephen, we bless you in the name of Yeshua Hamashiach. Jess, we bless you in Jesus' name. I say we, that's me and Holy Spirit. You see, it's not just you. There's a bigger picture. Okay, I'll see you soon. Um, Shalom, God bless. If you want to know more about times and seasons, then join me next month. We will be sharing again. Tishri is the seventh month of the religious calendar. The cycle is complete. And now we're in the new season. The stage has been set. It is done. Okay. Uh, love you. God bless you. And if you want to know more about prayer, about what to pray about, things that are on Father's heart so that we can see life saved, that we can see people uninjured, I'll give you an example. And I was a little small group. We've just two days ago, Father showed me fire is coming. It's important. Sound the alarm. It's now. We've been praying for two days. A huge explosion has just took place yesterday. I mean, massive to total destruction in the area. But guess how many people were saved? I think six or seven people. Sadly, it was only one boy. I say only one. He's a precious soul. He was seven years old. He went to heaven. And then today, another person. But Father saw them ahead of time. He wants us to pray. That's why there are watchmen. Okay. So if you're interested in that, then you must find us here. And just keep looking out uh, when we when we post them. Okay. Shalom. I'll see you next month.